The, well, what I should repeat then maybe is that I think that migration and asylum is indeed a challenge for the whole of the European Union and not just for border countries like Greece, Italy or Malta. And this is how exactly how we should address the, the issue as well. What is of absolute urgency to do right now is to finally start a proper rescue mission in the Mediterranean. Because as Michalis was saying, as the movie has been showing this, incredibly amounts of people dying in the Mediterranean who are looking for safety, for protection. And I think it is one of the greatest disasters of the European Union that people who are fleeing for to save their lives are dying at the doorstep of the rich European Union. There was a rescue mission, Mare Nostrum, it has already been mentioned, but this was done by Italy alone. And it was stopped because it did not receive any support from other member states. And with support, I don't only mean financial support. Mare Nostrum was also stopped for political reasons. Because some ministers believed that if you rescue people, then more will come. But this is absolutely cynical. How can you have people die in order to stop more people from coming? So what we have now is nothing but a border guarding mission. Which is only operating uh, just off the Italian coast and does not operate um, in the Libyan waters where people are actually drowning right now. And the council did not even agree in the end to enlarge the operational area of this border guard mission Triton. So we absolutely need a new Mare Nostrum. A mission that is only based on the humanitarian need to rescue lives. But secondly, we also need to ask why people are taking this very dangerous route across the Mediterranean. And the answer is very simple. Currently, they don't have any other possibility. So if people want to ask for asylum, they will have to take a dangerous route in order to arrive in the European Union and ask for asylum. In order to change the situation, we need to create legal ways, legal and safe ways of entry for asylum seekers. <laughs> this could, for example, be done through a European resettlement program. As well as through a more generous use of humanitarian visa. And especially for groups like Syrians, you can also think about other legal points of entry. 
και ειδικά για ομάδες όπως η Σύρη, που χρειάζονται Other points of entry. So then we finally, when we do that, we have finally safe and legal ways. But then what do we do next? Because as Michalis explained, only a few countries are taking on most refugees. And that is certainly not fair between the member states. So we need to create more fairness and solidarity between the member states. But I think we should also be more fair to the asylum seekers. And um, so that they can go to those places where they, for example, have family or where they speak the language. So that they can actually arrive where they want to arrive. That would mean a very um, radical, let's say, revision of the Dublin system. But I think now everybody has understood that Dublin does not work anymore. <coughs> Because there's a few countries that are overwhelmed with asylum seekers. <coughs> And then there's others who don't do anything. So I think it's time for a radical change of the Dublin system. But I know that it's not easy to get that through um, in all the member states that this is to be accepted. Of course, we cannot only stop at um, looking how to treat refugees once they are on their one way, once they are fleeing. We also have to look at uh, the way how we can um, how we can abolish the reasons for pe why people have to flee. And, and in some cases that is more difficult, but in some cases we really can do something at, as European Union. I'm thinking, for example, about doing a different agricultural policy, a different fishery policy, different trade policy. Because currently with our policies uh, we're making life even harder for people elsewhere. We're destroying the livelihood of fishermen and fisherwomen. We're destroying the incomes of farmers. And with the European trade policy we make poorer countries even poorer. So there's something we can really change. It is of course more difficult to do something in you know war situation where there is no easy answer. And some of the reasons that I mentioned, they make people not necessarily flee that they want to ask for asylum, but make them move in order to find a better life, or any sort of life. So 
So for those people, we should be able to put into place a system of legal migration that goes beyond asylum claims. And that is something I think we should also really strive for at the European level in order to allow people to come even if they're not the highest qualified. Because currently we have the blue card directive in place for labor migration, but only for the most highly qualified ones. So there's a lot of things um, that the European Union can do. The European Parliament, with a lot of weaknesses, is fairly progressive in some of those aspects. And uh, very often it's, the, it's many of the member states who block any progress. So we're very happy that we now have a strong ally. <laughs> Even though we know it's very, very tough in the council. <laughs> so we wish you all the strength for the negotiations. <laughs> Thank you very much.